Does me sticks into my skin use a bond? Who better to force a cheesy, uplifting anthem on in Crazy X than the delightfully deadpan Heather? In Josh is a liar. A longtime community college student finally gets forced to graduate and get on with the rest of her life. This prompts Heather to wonder what the future holds for her by way of a horny, cliche-laden song that lambasts every peppy high school musical-esque musical moment, delivered refreshingly without an ounce of sincerity. I'm the villain in my own story could have been sung by Ursula in The Little Mermaid. After weeks of scheming and plotting to win over another woman's boyfriend, Rebecca finally wonders if she's not as heroic as she thought in Josh is going to Hawaii. In an interview for Vulture's podcast, Rachel Bloom admitted I'm the villain in my own story was based on the scene which is classic too from The Little Mermaid. The sound, style, and overall tone of the song are certainly reminiscent of more unfortunate souls. However, the Disney villain references don't stop there. Visually, Rebecca's villain song also references the evil queen gazing into her magic mirror from Snow White and the Seven Dwarves and lyrically, Aladdin's Jafar and Hercules' Zero to the Realm. J.A.P. Battle is packed with Hamilton flavor. J.A.P. Battle Jewish American Princess for the boys is the rap battle showdown between Rebecca and her childhood rival author. The pair come head to head when their two law firms clash in Josh and I go to Los Angeles, as well as pulling its insults from the Jewish cultural vocabulary. Crazy X star and co-creator Rachel Bloom told Vulture that a particular hip-hop influenced musical also inspired the song. We are big fans of Hamilton and the idea of Rebecca having a rap battle was really funny to all of us. Originally it was going to be more legalese and a really legal-centric rap battle with her nemesis, but it evolved to a more general life battle. We tapped that ass is a modern day mashup of I'm gonna watch that man right out of my hair and Moses supposes. In when will Josh and his friend leave me alone? Rebecca is haunted by the musical ghosts of boyfriends past in her apartment who brag about how many times and places they've banged and nailed her there. The man duet and tap dancing references Gene Kelly and Donald O'Connor's various routines, especially Moses' supposes from singing in the rain. The melody and rhythm is a lot like I'm gonna wash that man right out of my hair from South Pacific. Angry Man is a karate themed footloose parody. You know when you get so darn mad, you just have to dance it out, not. Then you've clearly never been trapped in an 80s dance Michael movie. In why is Josh in a bad mood? Josh works out his confusing feelings of jealousy about Rebecca and Greg's relationship through the medium of dance fighting. Hilarious number remixes the Karate Kid with Kevin Bacon's toe-tapping teen angst and footloose. There's also a little Billy Elliot in there too for good measure. Maybe this dream could have been alternate title for Once Upon a Dream. If there's one thing Crazy X excels at more than anything else, it's lampooning Disney. Maybe this dream comes from season two's When Will Josh See How Cool I Am. It sees Paula singing about her hope that being a lawyer won't turn out to be another failed dream. In the song, Paula's dress and woodland setting smacks of Aurora slash Briar Roses once upon a dream from Sleeping Beauty, undercutting the corniness with lyrics about accidentally pooping while trying to learn to run. The warble in Paula's voice is also very reminiscent of Snow White's distinctive singing style, which just makes the subject matter even funnier. 
Where's Rebecca Bunch? is a straight parody of Belle from Beauty and the Beast. The climax of season two sees Rebecca jilted by Josh, who decides to become a priest instead of marrying her. Of course, Rebecca isn't exactly thrilled by this news and heartbroken, swears vengeance before disappearing. Where's Rebecca Bunch? serves as the Broadway style, all cast ensemble opening for season three. Visually and lyrically, it parodies Belle from Beauty and the Beast. This song sees the film's townsfolk united in song to gossip about how weird Belle says she wanders around oblivious room with her head in a book. In Where's Rebecca Bunch? The citizens of West Covina gossip about Rebecca's recent hardships as they wonder where's a woman's pride without her man. Maybe she's not such a heinous bitch after all is a love letter to Hairspray. Maybe she's not such a heinous bitch after all is what you get when you cross the romance with Hairspray. Rebecca performs this number in season three's I Never Want to See Josh Again after fleeing West Covina to recuperate with her mother. At first, Rebecca thinks she's hit rock bottom. But Naomi's uncharacteristic kindness starts to make her wonder if she's misjudged her heinous bitch of a mother. The start of the song perfectly matches the opening of Good Morning, Baltimore while the girl group arrangement is reminiscent of New Girl in Town. After everything I've done for you that you didn't ask for has all the fire of roses turned from just one. Paula discovers Rebecca has secretly abandoned their plan to win over Josh. It doesn't exactly sit right with her. In her explosive number in Paula Needs to Get Over Josh, she chastises Rebecca's ungratefulness as though she were a wayward daughter. This takes clear inspiration from Rose's turn in Gypsy. Penned by Stephen Sondheim, the classic tune from Gypsy Rose Lee is filled with motherly frustration and passive aggressive sex. Paula even rocks the same sultry red dress. The song is later reprised by Rebecca in season three's To Josh with Love. West Covina, California is your standard Broadway opening number. Some musicals use their opening number to give you a taste of the big songs to come. Others use it to pull the audience into the story quickly with some expositional lyrics and a full cast ensemble of singing. This big, Broadway opening number in Crazy X is the latter. Rebecca shimmies her away from the bustling streets of New York to the not-so-bustling streets of West Covina, California, all the while trying to convince us and herself through song that she totally didn't just move there for Josh. That would be crazy, right? While not a nod to a specific musical per se, the number is an amalgamation of how a countless numbers of musicals greet audiences. I've got my head in the clouds is basically singing in the rain. In season three's To Josh, with Love Josh sings about enjoying the obligation-free life of a priest after leaving his previous drama-filled life behind as he prances his way around a church. The weather theme, the upbeat sentiment of the lyrics, and in particular the dance routine that has him leaping through and around the set is a shout out to Gene Kelly's famous walk from the titled number in Singing in the Rain. Cold Showers is a drug laced the music man parody. In Josh and I work on a case, Rebecca corrals people living in Josh's apartment block into signing a petition about water pressure. This is, of course, yet another effort to get closer to Josh by giving them something to work on together. And it works. The rousing song Rebecca uses to get Josh's neighbors on board directly parodies the got trouble from the music man. In the song, a fast-talking salesman convinces the citizens of River City 
that a pool hall puts their town on a slippery slope to moral depravity. Or, as Rebecca vastly more bluntly puts it, cold water is drugs. Strip Away My Conscience is a sultry Chicago-inspired number. Rebecca is on the romantic war path in season three, which sees her making a devilish pact with her boss Nathaniel into Josh with love. After literally dancing around each other for a while, they finally get it on, consummating their deal to bring down Josh Chan. And what better way to sign off in an evil, sexy plan than channeling the devious seductress Velma Kelly, the song Rebecca seduces Nathaniel with is filled with black lace, smoky eyes and bomb fuss dance moves that nods to Chicago's all that jazz and cell block tango. The buzzing from the bathroom, the pastiche of empty chairs and empty tables from Leslie's rooms. While Rebecca and Nathaniel get to know each other a little more intimately into Josh, with love, their secretly Canadian co-worker Tim is shocked to learn from the women of the office that his own sex life may have been in trouble for years without him knowing, in a clear send-up of empty chairs and empty tables from less miserables, Tim laments about what the buzzing sound from the bathroom really means after he and his wife make love in a stripped-down, heart-rending and hilarious ballad. One indescribable instant is every Disney princess song ever sung by an actual Disney princess. For those super special moments that are truly indescribable, like Josh finally confessing his love for Rebecca in season one, Paula needs to get over Josh. The only song that'll do is one fit for a Disney princess. In the world of Crazy X, that song is one indescribable instant. It comes from the fictional animated film Slumber, which sounds suspiciously like a mashup of Sleeping Beauty and Tangled. Both these films feature similar epiphany-themed romantic songs. Just to really hammer the Disney references home, the singer is none other than musical icon, Lee Salonga, the singing voice of Princess Jasmine and Milan. Settle for me has Fred Astaire and Ginger Rogers written all over it. Black and white filter, the suit with the tailcoat, the permed curls, the tap shoes, the romantic setting. Settle for me from season one's ongoing on a date with Josh's friend, has all the visual hallmarks of a classic Fred and Ginger number, with Red and Rebecca filling in for iconic duo respectively. Of course, this being Crazy X, the sweeping romance and upbeat tone in Greg's singing voice is underlined by a less idealistic and awkward truth in the lyrics. He's not professing Rebecca is his one and only true love. He's requesting that she simply settle for him. The dream ghosts are dream girls. As if the title didn't make it clear enough, Doctor. Acopian's dream ghost song which she serenades Rebecca with on her flight back home to New York is a tribute to dream girls and the age of Motown. As the song goes on, it leans harder and harder into this musical reference, ending up with the three dream ghosts in early Diana Ross era wigs and matching sequin dresses. Acopian's fellow ghosts are Amber Riley, who notably covered, and I am telling you I am not going in musical Drain de Glee, as well as musical legend Ricky Lake. The Math of Love Triangles takes its cues from Diamonds are a girl's best friend. In all signs point to Josh. Or is it Josh's friend? Rebecca decides to take a more academic approach to her romantic problems. 
The math of love triangles sees her enlisting some math professors for the job, with the whole routine being an obvious homage The diamonds are a girl's best friend from gentlemen prefer blondes. Rebecca even matches Marilyn Monroe's outfit exactly minus the palette swap from pink to blue. The red love hearts that Marilyn's suitors offer her are also swapped to oversized rulers forming triangles for the parody. Flooded with justice is pretty much due you hear the people sing from less miserables. Flooded with justice is pretty much due you hear the people sing from less miserables. The first P asteriskness I saw is a NSFW rendition of Madam Maya. Hey guys, thank you so much for the support and like and comment down below and also thank you so much for watching and I look forward to see you in the next video then. Take care!